All right, Andreas Krieg is with us now from London, researcher at the Near East Centre for Security Studies, teaches at the uh, King's College London as well in Defence Studies Department, regular contributor to us on Al Jazeera, so nice to see you, Andreas. How do you feel with... You. No, let me rephrase that. Have we progressed at all in these two weeks? Um, not really. Qatar <laughs> has progress in so far as to trying to deal with the crisis and making progress in terms of finding alternative ways to import very essential food supplies and also some building supplies. Um, Qatar has ensured that the crisis or the impact of the crisis wasn't as bad as anticipated initially. Um, so there's been a progress there. Politically, actually, we haven't made a lot of progress. As you said, I mean, the, the, the mediation efforts by the Kuwaiti Emir have not been fruitful at this point. I think it has also a lot to do with the fact that Saudi Arabia and the UAE haven't been forthcoming in terms of saying what they actually want. What we know at the moment is what the grievances are, more or less, but we don't really know what they expect uh, Qatar to do about these grievances. Do you and I think this is, will be the crucial point at this point. Do you think Saudi Arabia and its uh, allies thought that Qatar might just roll over on this whole thing and that it might have actually been a lot I easier? I think so. Yes, I think there was a massive strategic miscalculation on the side of Saudi Arabia and the UAE. Um, they were very much incited by comments that Trump made uh, during the Riyadh visit where he said, take care of it. And uh, so Saudi Arabia and the UAE thought that the American government, the Trump administration, would be fully behind this push and would use their leverage against Qatar, completely forgetting that how important Qatar was for the United States. And mm. I think a lot of what happened during last week, the fact that Qatar has bought uh, F-15s, mm. uh, made quite a significant contribution to the, to the U.S. budget, means basically that the U.S. government can't do without Qatar, apart from the fact that obviously al Base bases in, uh, is mm. near Doha and the U.S. and Qatar is very vital in that, in that country of in that kind of uh, anti-ISIS operation. So there's no way to do without Qatar. The United States actually are not really siding with any side. They're trying to be, uh, they're trying to be on the fence here. Mm. The EU um, and other uh, governments are probably more leaning towards Qatar. They want this to stop. And they're putting pressure um, to say this blockade is actually um, hurting our business, is hurting our yeah. experts. So in, in many ways, the longer this is going on, the more time works in favor of Qatar, I would say. Andreas, officially, Kuwait is supposed to be mediating in this. But beyond the initial yeah. chats which were had, as I said, I think it was June 6th, uh, has there actually been anything on that front since then? I don't think I've seen anything. Um, there were a lot of phone calls. There have been a lot of um, in, informal meetings behind the scenes, not by the Emir, but by the secretaries of state um, and uh, other people working for the ministries going around trying to, to talk to each other. Um, but obviously there are no direct contacts at the moment between the Qatari government and the UAE and Saudi government to try to, to, to come to a conclusion, which is what actually happened in 2014. So it's, it's pretty much very, very quiet at the moment. And we don't really know who the other me mediator would be if not Kuwait. And Kuwait has a very much an interest to make this, uh, to resolve this issue, because if they don't, they know they might be next, because Oman, Qatar and Kuwait are somewhat the outliers. And